back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another episode of Lions Latest, where we go through the latest Detroit Lions news. And today, we have a couple of things to talk about. So let's get it started. Hey up, we're going to bite a kneecap off, and we're going to stand up, and then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap, and we're going to get up, and then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you. Before, before long, we're the, going to be the last one standing. And welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. As you guys can see, man, we're in a different hotel room today. I appreciate you guys. The support is awesome. I know like video times are kind of just random. I don't know when it's going to happen. But, you know, we're doing our best. And today we have some Lions news. Also, I have a video coming out for the Detroit Lions OTAs. We have some takeaways from week two OTAs. So we will get into that. But that's not going to be in this video. You know, I want to separate that video from the other one. So I don't know when that's going to come out because of editing times and upload speeds here. But I can tell you it will be coming at some point. So stay tuned for that. But I want to put this video out first because this is the latest Lions news. We have a couple of stories to talk about today. today. And the first, the biggest story that I want to get into right away is the Detroit Lions releasing fullback Nick Bodden. Now, yesterday, the Lions released defensive tackle slash no tackle John Adkins after the signing of Brian Price. So they signed Brian Price, they released John Adkins. And Adkins wasn't a super explosive defensive lineman. He just didn't seem to have much upside as a pass rusher. He was brought in with the pass regime. So they released John Adkins. And today, they released their fullback, Nick Bodden. Now, Nick Bodden, unfortunately, has dealt with a lot of injuries. And we knew this was coming. Like, let's be real. We knew this was coming. We just weren't sure who it was going to be. The Lions were going to release one of these guys. They had Jason Cabinda, who basically just won that role recently for the Detroit Lions. So it was like, okay, who are the Lions going to be released? It seems like it's going to be Nick Bodden, but we're just kind of waiting for it to happen. You know, the Lions going through some of the offseason process. And today we got the word the Detroit Lions have released Nick Bodden. It's unfortunate. This is a former seventh round pick out of San Diego. Eagle State for Detroit, but injuries, man, they've really just derailed his career up to this point. We're talking back in 2018 and OTAs dealing with an injury. 2019 plays for most of the season, but then a knee injury. And then that opened up the door for Jason Cabinda basically say, hey, I'm taking this role. Went from linebacker to fullback. He took the starting job for the Detroit Lions at fullback. And it was kind of like, well, dang, that's not good for Nick Bodden. So Nick Bodden has now been released. The one chance he kind of had is if he was going to play like an H-back type of role. But even in his career, he hasn't been much of a reception guy. He only has four total receptions with the Detroit Lions. And with all the fullbacks, all the kind of tight ends like Brock Wright, Jake Hausman. You take a look at a guy like Dedrick Mills. Like there was a lot of competition here for a player like Nick Bodden. So the Detroit Lions decided to release Nick Bodden. One of their early releases right after John Atkins. And we can expect more of this as the Lions, you know, slowly kind of work their way through the roster, trimming it down here and there. But we knew this was going to happen because you didn't need both of them. It was just, when is this going to happen, right? So I'm wishing McBodden the best of luck. Hopefully he can stay healthy, number one, and find an opportunity with our team because he is still a very young player and he's a pretty good pass blocker. He just isn't a great run blocker. And like I said, he lost the role to Jason Cabinda. It was definitely an uphill battle for him. Jason Cabinda was well, but that was one of their draft picks. But with all the injuries, man, it it was just really tough and then losing his role. So Nick Bowden has been released from the Detroit Lions. It showed up as a no participant at OTAs and that's why. So that is the first news that I want to touch on. Wishing you the best of luck, Nick Bowden. Go do your thing. Go ball out somewhere. News that I want to touch on isn't necessarily news yet because the Lions haven't made the move yet, but the Lions are definitely interested. And here we are back talking about Todd Gurley. Now, I don't want to dive into film or anything like that because, you know, I, I don't have that much time, honestly. But if we sign him, you know, we will do a film video on Todd Gurley at some point. But here we are back with some of the Todd Gurley talk and the Detroit Lions have made it known they are definitely interested in Todd Gurley. We are interested in Todd Gurley, but there is no timeline for this kind of signing. He also said it does not affect how they feel about DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams, but they would like to bring him in sooner than later would be better, but there is no timeline they're putting on this. Now, Bleacher Report believes the Detroit Lions are the fit. They believe the Detroit Lions will sign Todd Gurley. This is something that probably came about a week ago, and here it is back again, and Campbell was asked about it. And again, I just love you know how clear he is on everything. Like, okay, yeah, we are interested in this guy. We're not putting a timeline on it. Maybe we're going to try to figure out and negotiate some contracts here. Of course, he has the connections with Jared Goff, with Brad Holmes, you know, being a former offensive player of the year. This is what Deuce Staley said about Todd Gurley. He said, Todd Gurley, 
I mean the name. You sit back and you say the name and all the kind of highlights just pop up. A guy who's been very successful in the league, here's a guy you can go back a couple of years, was unstoppable. If you're looking at anybody that can help the Lions and Todd Gurley definitely can help the Lions. So the Lions are interested. They made it clear they're interested in Todd Gurley. They don't know when they're gonna get the deal done, but it seems like at some point there probably will be a deal done. Now he was brought in for a visit, probably a physical as well. So it must have went well. Now it's about the negotiating side of things. Is there other offers? Is there other teams interested in Todd Gurley for the Lions to getting this done? They're not going to rush it. They would like to get it done sooner. Of course, that way you can see him throughout the offseason and he can compete. And DeAndre Swift said himself, like he wants him brought in here. You know, and DeAndre Swift is inviting this. Of course, both of them are George Bulldogs, but he's like, man, I just want the competition. I want to compete. Add him to the running back room. I would be happy with that, right? So I love the answer from a guy like Swift. He's like, yeah, that's just more competition. Like that's the way you should be looking at it. Let me, let me go beat out that dude, Todd Gurley, that was this offensive player of the year. Let me go show what I'm really about. And again, Dan Campbell said, it's not that I feel this way or that way about Swift. I still feel the same ways about Swift and Jamal, but we just feel like he can help our team. And we know the Detroit Lions are going to be a run heavy team. They're going to want to run the football. And if you want to run the football, that's great, but you got to have depth there then too. You know, two running backs is nice, but then after that, it's not a question. We don't really know what we have in Rakeem Boyd, what we have in Jermar Jefferson. We like the thought of these guys in the NFL, but you're not really sure. It's one of the toughest positions to draft in the league. I mean, you look at a guy like Swift who dealt with an injury last season in practice. He already has missed some games. Like you lose one of those guys, you could be in a really tough situation when you're talking about a team that's going to have to run the football. So the more depth, you're talking about a guy that Jared Goff's going to be comfortable with and that honestly, yeah, there's the injury concerns, but he's played a lot of games. This would be an opportunity for him to take a step back, not have to get this bell cow role that he's always had. He could have much less carries, be a security blanket for the Detroit Lions, be someone they're comfortable with, but also impact every aspect because he runs well. He's great vision, can block. He's one of the best pass blocking running backs. And one year he was one of the best in the league as he didn't miss a single pass block. And he can also catch the ball as one year he led the, the LA Rams in receptions when Jared Goff was there. So he just checks a lot of boxes for the Lions. I know the injuries are a concern, but the Lions must feel good about it after the physical then bring him in because they're interested. They're just not putting a time on when it's going to be done, but it should get done at some point. And then the final news that I wanted to touch on, and again, we'll go into that. The Lions do the signing. We'll go into the, the film and I'll kind of break down why it is or isn't a good signing. But the final news that we have is about Jay Sean Cornell. Now, we don't have a ton of information on this, but this is that Jay Sean Cornell is going to be suspended for the first three games. This is the Detroit Lions' former seventh round pick. He was drafted in last year's draft, but dealt with an injury in the offseason, similar to what happened with Joel Heath. And didn't play for the entire year. So here he is coming back this season. I'm excited because I think he has a lot of pass rush upside when you watch him back with Ohio State, what he was able to do in some big games. But he has been suspended for the first three games. He said this, last year after losing a dear friend of mine, I made a mistake that was out of character. I owned it and worked on learning from it. Since then, I have grown as a person and now a better man. With that being said, I apologize to the Lions organization and the fans. I have learned from my mishap. Similar to what happened with Jay, with Jay Ron Curse, right? Jay Ron Curse missed four games. Bell has suspended him for a violation of substance abuse. So hopefully everything is okay there with Jay Sean Cornell. Obviously that's a very unfortunate thing to go through losing a friend, but he's like, Hey, I know I made my mistakes. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to get better. I can't make that kind of mistake. So I apologize to Lions organization. This is a really tough hit for him. missing the entire last season fighting for a roster spot to have this come up. So it's really tough. Like you don't want to have that happen. So he will be out for the first three games. Also could have a little bit of impact again, why the Lions did sign Brian Price because you're missing him now for the first three three weeks. Not to say that he would have had a huge impact, but it is depth, right? It is depth there. So Cornell will miss the first three games of the Lions this season. Hopefully everything is okay on his side and you know, he's better now and he learns from it, but that is the latest Lions news. Again, I'm going to leave it there short and sweet and we'll go into stuff much deeper once things happen. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. We'll be back with the OTA soon. Thank you for watching and I'm out.